Hello. Good morning, and here we are. We've already looked over the watch. I understand the condition. I don't think it's going to be any surprises. But you never know. Good movements. The loom on the hands is actually pretty dark, and that's too dark for me to bring back. I do have these handsets, like, new. Not new, but, well, you know what I mean. Marker's a little hazy. That'll clean up when I'm in the dial. Crystal looks fine. I already have the case back loose. I don't know. Let's just, let's just begin. Look at it chugging along just like a thing. Hmm, interesting. 6217 gold gold. Looks like somebody replaced the balance cock and the darn it. And the winding weight with uh, ones from a, probably a 6206, 6205, something like that. doesn't matter. They're exactly the same except for the color. Just adjusting my thing here. Don't mind me. I see fingerprints. It's generally dirty. So... There's no time like the present to get this thing apart. So let's let's do that thing. Loose. Whoops. Well, no time like the present. So let's get that whole thing apart. Loose. Yeah, dirty. Balance looks like it's rotating in plane. I have almost no power in this, so. Yeah, it's been apart a few times. You can see it's got some it's got some damage on those screw heads right there. Just, you know, people aren't quite as careful as they could be. It's not a bad thing, it is what it is. Actually, hang on, I want to check something first. It's bent. Bent. Okay, well, I have replacements of these. I'm not going to fiddle with it. That is bent. So we got one bad part. This, I mean, it's the most critical. It's one of the most critical pieces in the entire watch. Without this thing, it's, uh, it's simply, it won't wind efficiently, and we cannot have that. And plus, I have them, so why the heck not? Winding bridge is a little loose.
Eh, someone worked on the bridge. X L I T. X L. Well, I'll tell you that's unusual. You don't see that a lot too much anymore. It used to be things you'd see, but I really don't see that anymore. Because you don't want to do that. It damages the plating and gets to the brass underneath. And it's just not something you want to do. Intact, complete. Uh, I do not see any rust. I am going to have to rebuild this crown, this closed style crown. So I'm going to be ripping that apart. How many times this thing has been rebuilt? Come on, baby. You can do it. These have a big balance and a fairly gentle hairspring, which means it's just... A little sweet and gentle. Okay, since we're here now, it is time to get rid of that movement ring. Normally I'd pull the whole thing, but I don't like this rattling around like that. It's just not fun. This, by the way, is the tried and true Rolex method. Unscrew the screws, and then you tip it forward, and out it comes. You don't have to release the screws. I'll be taking this apart later. Let's go like this. Let's take this out of here. See, look, it just comes right out, and the screws are still in the movement. That is good stuff, I am telling you. Okay, so let me... I gotta pull these hands. Your can opinions loose. Yeah, it's I, I shouldn't be able to move it that easily. Hmm, not bad. With six, two, and sevens, they don't have a uh, they have an open gate wheel guard and so the whole thing them the whole thing just sort of floats up and down there it's not bolted together so you got to take it apart from this side typically well, you don't have to but I do hey look at that your wibbly wobbly spring washer is pretty flat not that that means anything. 24 hour wheel, hour wheel. Whoa, yeah, that thing, canopy is just, just loose as heck. Oof, okay, so I'm gonna put this to one side. Well, 
No, I'm going to clean it first, and then I'll go to one side. Behind. Let me see how your center wheel is. Center wheel's moving a lot, too. Might need a new center wheel. We will find out. Hey, look, more fingerprints. Old grease. Oh, wait, I don't want to put that in there yet. Come back out. One of the funky things about this older series is they have a lot of these free-floating Shepherd's Crook springs and stuff. Come on, come on, there we go. Get out. Come on. Come on. Oh, for goodness sake. Come on. Get out. 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 Thank you. I'm going to take this apart in some because this spring is really, I like to be on top of it before I let that one go. Okay. Let's get the rest of the train apart, though. Yeah. It's kind of little, doesn't it? Hmm. Not much. Now we get. Now we get. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, it looks okay. I thought for a second that the inner edge of that jewel hole was chipped, but it's not. That would have been a hard thing to do. That normally doesn't happen with pallet fork bridges, but you never know. Mm. 
the stone might have it might have a channel grooved into it. I'll have to see. I don't know the answer. Over there. Just firm that one down. Let's open this up. Open. Ooh, nice and firm. Ditto. Ditto. Well, that's good. Well, the holes look pretty good on those bushings. That isn't too bad. I'll clean that out. 6000 series, you, we, the, the jewels don't exist to do the mainspring arbor ports, but that's usually not a big deal because the train is, carries so much less power than its the 6000 series cousins or descendants. All three kids are fighting. I have no idea about what. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. He even went so far as to take this thing on. Wow. More damage. Nothing major, but... Well, we'll see. All right. We'll see. Center wheel is moving around some. I think I have them NOS. At least a few. Come here. Oh, I keep missing. See, you can't, the jewels for this just don't really happen. I mean, they made them, but they're not for, you can't get them separately. This is, I don't know if you can see it, but this hole, that's the lower mainspring R report, and you see it's all ovaled out there. Uh, so I'm going to have to do some old school repairs to try to bring that back. Close that up a little. Well, it doesn't then cuts don't look bad. Hmm, we'll see. I'm gonna take this apart, clean up this stuff. Um, so really the main thing I'm seeing then is we've got a bad first thing is we've got a bad magic lever, winding pole lever. Lower mainspring arbor port is worn. Let us open up this. Mainspring barrel. Don't you don't get out. It's amazing. It's so close in some ways to being a 6000 series, which it basically is, but you can just, you can see the design process. There's that. Uh, mainspring looks okay. Yeah, 
it's pretty wibbly. See if it feels all like a buckled or washboardy at all. Well, it feels pretty smooth, actually. Hmm. Well, let me clean it up and we'll see. Ditto with these. Okay, so I gotta do some hand cleaning and uh, it's gotta work on that repair and then I'm gonna clean everything and then I'll come back and we'll start looking at assembly. Okay, case is apart. It's complete, obviously. There's a little warpy spring. Here is your original city ring. These are neat, two-part construction. The little bottom part that has the gears. And then you have this upper part, which is the city ring. Those are gonna go over there. You got a little bit of, a little bit of corrosion. I'm not sure how pity it's gonna be. I'm gonna need to, whenever I have stuff like this, I, I have to go in and first I remove it manually, physically, and then I have to put it through uh, usually a few cycles of different cleaning stuff that I do in order to get that out of there. Oops. So I'm gonna have to do that at the front of the back. I don't, I mean, there's a little pitting in the case back right there. In a little bit there too. I'll clean it up as best as I can. There's your old crystal, which as we know is perfectly clear, but it is also broken and cracked in several places. there put that there and I'll deal with that later and now I'm gonna have to hand clean these things okay now I swear I'm gonna go and clean the movement and do all that stuff and I will be back when everything is clean hi Chris so it's coming back together you got your keyless works assembled uh, I just repaired the cannon pinion so it is nice and firm your center wheels fine there's your jewel Got the train back together, like so. You can see the train move, if you feel like it. Okay. I usually like to run it when the train is unstressed. I usually like to run it and just listen to it and tip it around some and get things to slop around. See, it's moving already a little easier. And that helps you, you know, cut down your time waiting for the movement to run in so you can get decent numbers out of it. All right, so I'm gonna get going and uh, let's let's see what we can do. It's always fun to uh, be able to get this to the point that I can get this running for somebody. I don't like to do it all the time, but this one shouldn't, I hope, be a problem. And you're like, wait, why don't you wanna do it all the time? And I'm like, but the problem is, is you gotta be right on top of stuff to do it correctly. Uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty okay right now. Okay, look, we never finished looking at this, the pallet fork stones. Yeah. Look fine. Okay, we got 
one stone. Okay, we got the other one. Yeah, this is the tough part when I'm filming. Okay, I was saying I was having some problems with your balance. There's your balance right there. Specifically, your hairspring. So, after I made that segment, I went and put it on here. You can actually see the kind of weird stuff it was doing. Losing 140, you're gaining 70. It's going up and down. Look at what it was going down before. Then, here, I put it back on to correct the thing. It paused currently. And it was, it was running at like 150 for amplitude because the hairspring was uh, impacting the underside of the balance bridge. Balance cock, actually. See, and look at that balance go. Look at it go now. Boy, we got great amplitude, huh? Yeah, because these movements in good condition, they give great amplitude. Look at how steady it is. I haven't adjusted this, by the way. I haven't done anything to it, besides, obviously, servicing it and correcting the hairspring. So now we can look at the, the average gain the rate change, 31, 31, 30, which is great. Because that means we should be able to dial it down to darn near flat. Especially with amplitude like that. Real steady, 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 steady. 31, 31, 30, 32, 32, 32. Yeah, those are great numbers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, uh, com and continue working on that. I've got it flipped and I have all the calendar stuff on minus the dial. So you're seeing amplitude and accuracy on the other side which is the other side of what we worry about. So dial up, dial down, we're getting very, very good top down, top up accuracy and amplitude, great amplitude. Look at the beater. Great, so I was able to fix that hairspring, cool. It's always better to fix something than replace it if I can do that, man. Boy, that's steady. Isn't that steady? Okay, so the reason I'm doing this backwards um, in the because I've got to finish cleaning the dial and then put the dial in here because the dial is an integral part of holding the calendar together. Seiko got rid of that design later on, but... Okay. Good morning. Well, actually, good afternoon. Look at that. Anyway, I've been working at this. We're just about ready to close it up. I'm ready to close it up, I'll tell you that. Excellent amplitude. This is at full, full, full superpower. So right now it's gaining a hair. But the actual non-superpowered power spike is very tight. Fantastic amplitude, no beat error. I'm very, very proud of 
correcting that hairspring. There you go, see? You know, people, they talk, you know, there are some people and they worry about beat, having a high beat or a low beat or whatever the heck it is. You know, this thing, people are like, oh, it's only 18,000 BPH, but they have great amplitude when they're serviced properly and they're extremely steady. It's very elegant. It's not high powered. And uh, these guys can be super crazy accurate. They just need to be serviced properly and in good shape. And these things will be as good as darn near every kind of watch you can imagine. Great quality. Great quality. Far and away better than um, anything even Rolex did at the time. Entirely serious. Every, every bit as good as a 1570 or 1575, if you ask me. Look at that. Oh no, we're gaining a second. All right, let's. I want to close it up and then let's finish. And there we go. It's interesting about these is there's no serial number uh, because the case back was modified or something, which means these are actually unnumbered, and that's correct. Isn't that wild? any case, it's all done. It runs beautifully, beautifully. I'm so happy that it all turned out well. I'm very happy I was able to correct that hairspring. There is the new loom that I was talking about. It's extremely readable at night. Rotates the way it should. All new seals. Uh, I was worried about your your bezel here, because there was a fair amount of corrosion underneath it, and I was worried that it was cracked, but I don't believe that it is. Your case back, same deal. I was worried that it was cracked, but I went all over it. I did not see a crack. It's definitely got some pitting underneath it, as I showed you, but the case back itself is solid, and it has new seals and everything. So really, I mean, that's about it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience, and it's ready to come back. Thank you very much.